use our password equals question mark. It should look familiar, right? It's the same thing you'd type in the box if you were doing this query um, through the GUI. All right, so now we have our select command. What do you suppose we have to do next? Well, can I run that query right now the way it is? Give it in the text box, do you? Pardon me? So you don't have anything to put it in. Yeah, we haven't put, we haven't stuffed anything in the parameters. So the next thing we have to do is we have to populate those two parameters. So, obj ds dot select parameters dot add. And we need to add the parameter. And what we have to do is we have to give a name to the parameter and we have to say where it's going to come from. There's actually a couple different ways we create this, but this is a version of the function I'm going to use. So, first parameter I'm going to call username. And where does the value for it come from? It comes from textbox1. Am I done yet? What do I have to do? Same thing for password. So now we have everything ready to go with this. In other words, imagine in your mind you going in and creating this SQL data source through the IDE. What would you do? You'd first define the connection string. Boom. That's what we do here. The GUI actually takes care and, and sets two parameters for you, all right, which, which you, again, you don't really notice, but it does. So we have to set those two parameters by hand. So that's what we did. We would then go in and would specify the query. Well, you specify the query would then have to go in and specify the parameters and where they get their values. So although we have never done this in code, this should look pretty familiar to you. All right? Because we do the same thing when we use the IDE. It's just here we're manually writing the instructions to do it. Now, this next section is probably something that is not going to look familiar. Okay? So if this one's puzzling, Take my word for it for now, and, and we'll try to go through and we'll explain it. We have to actually execute the command um, not associated with a visual control. Normally, when you, when you bind a visual control to a data source, initializing that will, initializing those objects will involve actually doing a SQL statement. Here, since we're doing it programmatically, we have to actually initiate the SQL statement. So, I'm going to write these statements in here. And then I will explain them. Oh, I had them highlighted. Okay. Right, there we go. Thanks. It would have been not working, and I would have been wondering what was wrong. What, like Harry Potter? Like two, port, two points Gryffindor. <laughs> that's, what, that's an idea for next semester. Maybe I'll divide all my classes like into four groups. The, yeah, four houses. The Slytherin, the, 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 
a Gryffindor, what is it, a Hufflepuff, and... <laughs> you can name them like the, you can do like the Cuffernighters or the... <laughs> and y'all gotta wear jackets with little logos on it. Yeah. Now, I lied. I'm gonna explain these one at a time. All right, because it's better than going through all of them. Here we're saying the mode for our data source. There's essentially two ways that you can set through it. The data reader is simpler than a data set. In other words, a data set, I just want to do a query and be done with it and read through the values. The data set is if I wanted to do some more involved operations with it. So for simply doing a query and grabbing the results and looping through the fields that get returned or the rows that get returned, a data reader is good for the job. Pardon me? Would that a little bit be like a string reader or no? Um, it would be comparable, yeah. All right. Now I have to set some place to put my results. All right. And this will be a I set up my iReader. Okay, let's look at this monster of a command. This is where we're going to put our data. All right, this is where we're going to put our data. Now, we already indicated, based on the previous line, that we can retrieve the data a couple different ways. We can retrieve the data into a data set, or we can, um, well, we have a couple options on how we're going to ret uh, retrieve the data. So we have to cast the data as a data reader 
because that's the results we're going to get because we said we're going to use a data reader. If we use the data set, we'd have to cast the results as a data set. In other words, this select statement can return one of two possible kinds of objects, one of two possible classes of objects, a data reader or a data set. Since we said we want to use a data reader, we have to interpret the results as a data reader. So this actually is the instruction that does the select, and it will fill up the object, my data, with the results. Okay? So now we got this structure, if you will, and you can consider it like a table. Um, by a table, I mean it has rows and columns. How many rows will this have? Zero or one. Okay. How many columns will it have? Three. User ID, first name, last name. So this is going to have zero or one columns. And, oh, I'm sorry, zero or one rows, and it's going to have three columns. So what we have to do is potentially, if this were a different SQL statement, if this were a different select statement, we could have multiple rows, right? For example, for whatever reason, let's say I was writing to pull up a list of users that were in the state of Ohio. All right? I might then get a list of 100 different users. So we've written our SQL statement, whereas we know we're only getting one, but our but from the perspective of the code, we have to assume, or, or, or how do I want to say this? We have to actually go and look to see if it did, in fact, get that one. All right? Because it could have gotten zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the data source, or rather read the data reader. I think here's where a diagram comes in handy. I'm going to try to keep the code up here as I write. I'm going to try writing up there. We set some parameters to the connection string. We create our select statement. We fill in the parameters that need to get filled in. We tell it that we're going to execute this in data reader mode. And a data reader mode is a very simple start at the beginning, read until you hit the end mode. As opposed to a data set where you can jump around and read things in any order. So the data reader is simpler. With a data reader, it's a structure that allows us to read, start to start, and read until we get to the bottom. Okay? That's all we really need to do here. We need, just need to make one pass to see if, if we've gotten a value or not. So that's why we set it as a data reader. We do this read. This returns a structure called my data. An object called my data, which is a data set. Or I'm sorry, a data reader object. And it's going to have one of two possibilities. It's going to have one row that contains three columns, or it's going to contain zero rows. Nothing. All right? The way data readers work is you start at the beginning and read till you hit the end. So right now, we're at the start of the data reader because we haven't done any reading yet. It's like a book. When you start a book, you're before the first page. So you go to read the first page. It's now going to be looking at this row in the results set. In this case, in this case, there ain't no row to look at. All right, so let's consider
consider those two scenarios. If I try to read this data, uh, this data reader, and there's a row in it, the read function is going to return a true. Yep, I got a row. So think of the read function as saying, if there is a next row, go to it. Otherwise, tell me there ain't a next row. So in the case of one row being returned, yeah, there's a next row, and here it is. In the case of there being zero rows, it's going to tell me, nope, there ain't no more rows. Okay? So, that's what it means when I do this read and have it enclosed in an if statement. The true part of the if statement says, yes, we got a row. The false part of the if statement means we didn't get anything. Now in this case, the way this is written, we know that this is either going to return 1 or 0. So we don't have to loop through it. A data reader could, for a different select statement, return a whole list of things, in which case each read would give us the next guy on the list. First row, second row, third row, fourth row, until it got through all the rows, when it gets to the last row, it would return a false. In this case, we don't have to worry about that. We either got one row or we got nothing. If we got a row, then we have success. If we didn't get a row, we have failure. So, what I can do is, if this function returns a true, If this function returns a true, then we have a successful log on. Because it means it got a row. Otherwise, we have an unsuccessful log in. change my greeting page to say welcome
first name, last name. All right, let's try this. So I go here and I log in. I did not want that page. I want the login. All right, I type in username and password, and Zellers, password 1234, click login. I go to category page, or where do I want to go? I want to go to the greetings page. should let's go and change this real quick because if you remember we were playing around with the bit of what if they tried to get to the category page and they weren't logged on um, let's redirect them to there then redirect them back I am going to put an else here that says else and response redirect them to where? To breeding.aspx. So now I go to log on and I type in D Huffman and his password, capital P, for dollar sign, dollar sign, W zero R D. Welcome, Don Huffman. All right. So, thinking through this, all right. Up to here, I would expect this, and again, I apologize for a little bit of confusion I had due to my outdated notes and being thrown for a loop, but um, it is funny. Once, you, once something goes wrong, immediately you get flustered and you, your, your brain shuts off when you're presenting in front of people, but that's my problem, not yours. All right. Up through here, I would expect this to look familiar. Not that you've done it before, but these are the kinds of things that you were doing before when you set up a data source. You created a connection string for that data source. You associated it with a connection string that you've already defined. Doing the same thing here, except we're doing it two lines in instead of one, because the IDE takes care of both lines for you. We're doing it um, we have to do them both individually if we're doing it manually. We set up a select statement. Yeah, we've done that a million times. We define the parameters for that select statement. Well, we kind of did that right through the IDE when you go in and you say where the different values are going to come from. Maybe it comes from a drop down or a query string or whatever. Here it comes from text boxes. So up to here, it should look at least kind of familiar for you. Again, you might have to get used to the specific syntax of this. Down here, these three lines are the ones, or from here to here about, are the ones where I could see where they'd be confusing right now. All right. In essence, what you're doing is, at this point, you're specifying how you want to read the data for your SQL data source. And where you want to put the data for your SQL data source. In this case, the how is I simply want to read it sequentially. I want to start at the beginning and read till I hit the end. That's what a data reader means. That I'm going to start at the beginning and read to the end. 
which again, for a simple task like this is adequate. So if you're doing a query and you just want the results, and you just want to output the results, yeah, this is probably adequate for that. That's what the line with the cursor indicates, that I'm reading this just in, in what's called sequential mode. I'm not skipping around. I'm not going to go back later and reread stuff. I'm just going to take it and read it from the start to the end. This statement goes and actually gets the data. All right? And it should be simple enough because we see objds select, which means it goes and executes a select statement. The only thing a little bit odd is we have to tell it, hey, because we can pull the data a couple different ways, we have to tell it to treat the results like a data reader. And so that's why we're doing the casting as an iData reader. Then, my data is our results. In our case, we know that we either have one or zero rows. So we don't have to include this in a loop. We're not going to like loop through and, and look at everyone who, uh, whose user ID and, and password matched. We know that there can be, by definition, only one person or zero people. Um, so we read. When you do a data reader, like we've done it, the read is sequential, which means we say, give me the next one. The first time we do a read, therefore, it's pulling the first one. And it's going to return a true or a false. A true means it grabbed the first one. A false means it didn't grab the first one because there was no first one. That is, the data reader was empty. So, if it did grab the first one, then it can set the session variables. And again, this my data as a table, we simply refer to the column number for the user ID, first name, last name, and so on. Otherwise, this else goes with this data read. Otherwise, we haven't successfully read the data. All right? If we have not successfully read the data, then there are no rows in here because there is no one with that user ID and password. Therefore, we're unsuccessful. Now, I didn't test the unsuccessful part, which is, which is bad. All right? um, so let's go and do that. So I'll go here and I'll just type in garbage for user ID and password, and sure enough, it tells me unsuccessful. So that part does work. Or if I type in a username with an invalid password, it still tells me unsuccessful. Or if I type in a valid password, but for a different user, if I type my password in for Huffman, it also tells me it's wrong. So this works. The um, reason I make a big deal of testing all those scenarios is that, um, what do I want to say? Is that um, it's important to think of all the possibilities that could happen and test them. All right? Question. Is my password case sensitive or not? Yes. No, because it's Windows. <laughs> Good point. Let's say Norod, P. Norod, his password is the word password, and I put it in the database in lowercase. Do I have to put it in in lowercase for it to work? Yes. Okay, we got a vote for yes. yes. Okay, we got a second vote for yes. We have a vote for no because it's Windows. Do we have any other votes? We do have one other vote from me. No, it is not case sensitive, but it's not because it's Windows. It's because SQL typically is case insensitive unless we specify others. So if I type in PNOR. 